This is your sharing doctor, Dr. Delicite. Today, what I want to share with you is on how to compare COVID-19 with other diseases or other respiratory illnesses. You see, before 2020, you might have not worried about a tickle in your throat or tightness in your chest. But that's changed today. With the pandemic coming, even modest signs of respiratory infections can make you panic and think that it's COVID-19. That's why it's very important to know the signs or the hallmarks of COVID-19 and other illnesses so that you can compare whether it's a flu or influenza, it's just a cold or asthma or pneumonia or other respiratory illness and not COVID-19. You have to know the hallmarks of COVID-19 and how you can differentiate it from other illnesses. I want to share with you my research on this matter because I know that a lot of us have been anxious about this COVID-19. Marami ho sa atin ang nag-aalala kung mayroon tayong cough o ubo Meron tayong runny nose, meron tayong medyo pagsisikip ng dibdib. So tayo ay nababahala at ang stress ay masamang masama. In fact, yung iba na nagkakasakit at namamatay ay dahil nagkaroon ng stress at dahil sa stress humina ang resistensya. What I mean is for those who do not understand the Tagalog, when you become stressful and your stress becomes chronic, your immune system weakens. And that could be a start of sickness. Stress is the root of many diseases because when you are stressed, when you are anxious, you cannot sleep properly, you cannot eat well, you cannot think well, so you tend to weaken your immune system. One of the researches that I had is based on the dean of Brown University, who was formerly the director of the Harvard Global Health Institute, Dr. Asish Jha. And um, here, Dr. Jha was able to distinguish or identify the hallmarks of COVID-19 and compare them with flu, with cold, with seasonal allergies, and other respiratory bug infection or respiratory illnesses. So now, let's go and distinguish these signs and symptoms of these different illnesses, compare them with the symptoms or the signs of COVID-19. COVID-19 is a very serious and extraordinary contagious respiratory illness. It's a type of virus that is called SARS-CoV-2. And this is a cousin of the common cold but its potential consequences are really serious, more serious, can run from hospitalization to lasting complications and even to death. What are the hallmarks of COVID-19? One is loss of taste and loss of smell. The other is the absence of nasal congestion fever, cough, shortness of breath, and muscle aches. 
The other potential symptoms are sore throat, congestion, runny nose, chills, shivering, headache, fatigue, diarrhea, and loss of appetite. These are the other potential symptoms of COVID-19. Now, some people may not have symptoms, so they are called asymptomatic for COVID-19, but according to Dr. Cha, these are still contagious people. Number two is flu or influenza. Influenza is a highly contagious respiratory infection and this is caused by a virus which is called A, B, or C virus. This is usually present from October to March. What are the hallmarks of influenza or flu? These are muscle aches, fever, and coughing. These are some of the distinguishing features or signs of flu or influenza. But there are other potential symptoms or signs, sore throat, congestion, runny nose, headaches, fatigue, and loss of appetite are other symptoms of flu or influenza. What is the difference of COVID-19 from flu or influenza? One major difference is in flu or in influenza, there is no shortness of breath. Number three is the common cold. Sa Tagalog, ito yung sipon. Ano ang pagkakaiba? What's the difference between common cold and COVID-19? Well, the common cold is also a viral infection. It's actually called also rhinitis. And it is an upper respiratory infection that can be caused by any bacteria, viruses, and even fungi. Now, this could include coronaviruses or rhinoviruses. And it's usually mild and can be resolved within a week. What are the hallmarks of cold? Or what are the distinguishing factors of cold? Well, number one is runny nose, congestion, coughing, and sore throat. Other potential symptoms are muscle aches and also fatigue. Cold symptoms that could be different from COVID-19 are cold does not cause shortness of breath. Hindi siya nagkakaroon ng pagsisikip, ng paghinga. Hindi rin siya nagkakaroon ng body aches o pagsakit ng katawan at wala rin siyang loss of appetite. Hindi ka nagkakaroon ng chill pagka mayroon kang sipon and wala usually fever ang sipon. Ang number four na infection na sometimes nagkakaroon ng pagkakapareho ang mga symptoms or signs sa COVID-19 ay tinatawag na seasonal allergies. Seasonal allergies is not caused by a virus but is caused by allergens. And these allergens could actually be dangerous also. But these allergens become dangerous because it can cause reaction from our immune system. What are the allergens that can cause seasonal allergies? Could be pollen from trees or from other botanicals. It could also be food. So you have food allergies. It could also be caused by molds. And allergens are typically seasonal. Usually, um, pagpanahon ng 
pagbubulaklak, the flowering trees can cause allergens in the air. And when people inhale it, then it could cause seasonal allergy attack. In the U.S., springtime is a very common allergy season. And this lasts for weeks or even months, depending on what causes the allergy in a person. What are the hallmarks of allergies? One is runny nose, itchy eyes, sneezing, and also congestion. Other potential symptoms are loss of smell and congestion, and how can you differentiate seasonal allergies from COVID-19? Allergies does not cause fever or headaches. Allergies do not have coughing and sore throat. And allergies do not cause shortness of breath. It does not usually have muscle aches, chills, or even fatigue. And it does not cause diarrhea or loss of appetite. Now we go to number five, which is the last respiratory infection that I would be discussing in comparison with COVID-19. And this is asthma. Asthma is a chronic lung condition, which is caused by inflammation of air passages. It can happen in one lung or in another or in both lungs. Airway is narrow and makes it hard to breathe. And this could be a cause of concern that it might be COVID-19. According to Dr. Cha, asthma can be triggered by a cold, which is correct. Or it could be triggered by influenza or flu, but it's a separate condition. The hallmarks of asthma are difficulty breathing, chest tightness, and persistent cough. Other potential signs or symptoms are severe, which could be caused by severe asthma attack, or shortness of breath, and rapid pulse, bluish discoloration of the lips, and the nails. How do you differentiate asthma from COVID-19? Well, asthma does not cause a fever. That's one. It does not cause sore throat. That's another. It does not cause congestion, does not cause runny nose, or loss of taste or smell. It does not cause chills. It does not cause muscle aches, shivering, or headache or loss of appetite according to Dr. Cha. Now what should you do to tough out an illness? There are certain natural ways that could be done in order to prevent or heal these diseases and we will have to discuss them now. To make yourself tough follow the wisdom an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure and there are natural ways to strengthen your immune system because that's number one consideration by any person if he or she wants to avoid getting sick getting COVID-19 strengthen your immune system well one of the ways to strengthen the immune system is through dietary considerations. So number one is hydrate yourself properly. Be sure that you have enough water in your system. You see, as I've told you in one of my videos in the healing power of water, we are 85% 
water. Our cells consists of 80 to 85 percent water. That's the reason why our cells can only function properly if we have enough or sufficient amount of water in our cells, in our bodies. So hydration is very important and you have to drink clean, proper water. These are from the faucet, from clean rivers or streams, from waterfalls are the best water to drink. Do not drink bottled water and avoid alkaline water as much as possible because they can cause you sickness and even death. You see, when you avoid bottled water, you are avoiding another dietary consideration that is very significant in making our immune system strong is to eat dishes that are whole foods. Seasonal vegetables and fruits are very important and organic beef, organic chicken, organic lamb, organic goat, wild caught fish with scales and fins are very important sources of proteins. So you have to include them in your diet. Try to avoid fast foods because they have chemicals and other additives that are not good for our cells and for our immune system. The other dietary consideration is to avoid cooking oils that are highly containing omega-6. I think I have a video on this which are identifying and explaining to you the dangers of these seed oils. These seed oils are corn oil, soybean oils, canola oils, even olive oils and palm oils are dangerous to take. When you fry your foods in these oils, the omega-6 contained of this are far too high compared to their omega-3 contents. Remember that the omega-6 are inflammatory components. And when there is inflammation in our bodies, free radicals are also endangering ourselves, endangering our organs. And that means that we are susceptible to diseases, even chronic diseases. And that's the reason why, as much as possible, we avoid cooking oils that are containing lots of omega-6. Remember, the ratio should be 2 or 3 is to 1. That means that there should be 3% omega-3 and just one percent omega-6 and these seed oils that I have mentioned have very high percentage of omega-6 more than omega-3 so to avoid inflammation please avoid them as much as possible try to limit your intake of fried foods the other dietary consideration is incorporate more herbs and spices. Take lots of garlic and ginger and black pepper and turmeric into your dishes. These are very important in providing us with anti-inflammatory foods. So when you put this herbs and spices into your dishes you are making your dishes or your foods to be anti-inflammatory also 
give a good dash of salt to make your foods taste better or to add flavor to your dishes. The other dietary consideration is take the habits of getting probiotics before meals that is about 20 to 30 minutes before your meal probiotics are very important for your gut health for your brain health and for the bodily system health what are the non-dietary considerations that could strengthen your immune system number one of this is sunlight exposure sunlight is the best source of vitamin d3 you see vitamin d3 is very important in providing our immune system the ability to fight infectious diseases in fact tuberculosis has been found to be healed by d3 or sunlight exposure even covid and flu and cold and asthma can be healed or can be helped by sunlight exposure and this is the reason why i am recommending to you sunlight exposure now gazing soft sunlight in the sky in the morning from six o'clock to eight o'clock is a very good way to get the biophotons which are from the sun into your system because these biophotons are energy giving and they have the health and healing properties that could help our immune system fight infections fight diseases now another way to strengthen our immune system is to move regularly do not be stagnant do not just sit do not be a couch potato Ikanga. and one of the ways is you don't have to go to the gym or you don't have to exercise vigorously simple walking say around your house or even in your house try to move regularly do not just lay down on your bed the whole day because moving can make your cells agile therefore you are trying to make your body healthy from the cellular level aside from that i would recommend that you walk barefoot regularly on the soil or on grassy areas try to go to the park if you have parks those who live in villages you have parks and try to go to the parks especially if there are trees and and greens in your park that would increase your vibration and as i've said in my former videos increased vibration means health when your vibration is low that could invite diseases so walking barefoot on the ground on the soil not on cemented areas but on the soil or in grassy areas you are connecting yourself with the electromagnetic frequency of the earth which is 7.83 hertz and it it has the same hertz frequency hertz with our bodies so that would be very important if you can go to the beach that would also be very good especially if you could come or go to waterfalls that would be better and you see our constant connection with the earth is very important if we want ourselves to be healthy and well because as i told you the frequency of the earth is the same as the frequency of our bodies and that's the reason why this earth is the only habitable planet for humans now the other 
consideration which is again very important for strengthening our immune system is sleep we need to sleep seven hours every night as much as possible sleep early that is sleep from nine o'clock if you want to be beautiful or ten o'clock and you have to wake up at six o'clock if you sleep ten o'clock you have to wake up at six o'clock do not also wake up at 12 o'clock because sleeping too much is not also good you see it is when we sleep that cellular regeneration takes place and that's the time when our cells are replenished and it is very important that our cells are replenished so that they are always young and toxins are flushed out of the brain during sleep so sleeping properly is very important for our immune system to be strong and of course the last consideration that i would recommend is faith in god we have to improve our connection with our almighty god when we activate our faith in god then we could rest in him and resting in him can make the world dimmer and dimmer when we rest in our almighty god then we can be freed from our cares in this world we can be freed from anxieties we can be freed from depressions from frustrations and from stresses we can forget all the cares of this world we can forget covid and let's just rest in him so flushing our sinuses is the most economical natural and simple way to stop the viruses even covid viruses into migrating to our lungs and the last way simple way to prevent COVID viruses and even flu or cold viruses to progress is by nebulizing. This is a way by which studies conducted by Dr. Thomas Levy has arrested COVID-19 virus and nebulizing with hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide was found to arrest COVID viruses at the start of its science. So when, say for example, you have runny nose or you have, you have congestion, try to nebulize. Nebulize with food grade 3% hydrogen peroxide and with saline solution. And this is, according to studies, have helped COVID patients from progressing into severe COVID disease. If you don't have food grade hydrogen peroxide, maybe you can use colloidal silver. Colloidal silver can be used to nebulize when you have flu, when you have colds, and when you have COVID virus. But they should be done, the nebulizing should be done at the first sign of disease. One or two days, you have to nebulize. Inaasahan ko po na nakatulong ito sa inyo, nakadagdag sa inyong kaalaman to prevent these diseases to progress especially COVID disease. Ito po ay inaasahan ko din na nakatulong sa inyo upang malaman ang kaibahan ng COVID diseases sa flu, sa sipon, sa asthma, sa allergy upang hindi kayo magpanik, upang hindi kayo masyadong nag-aalala kung ito ba ay COVID na sa nalaman nating kaibahan 
ng mga ibang respiratory diseases sa COVID, malalaman natin kung kailan tayo magpupunta sa ospital o kung kailan tayo tatawag sa doktor. I hope this helped you even in a minuscule way. Thank you so much and may God bless you.